It says webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. Well, there we go then. Right. So we are good to uh, begin. Let me just jump into my window. All right. Um, Okay, I think we're good to go. So uh, everyone out there who's listening, uh, welcome from, uh, well, fellow quarantine land, I guess. Um, I am Caleb Hale. I'm the uh, Director of Communications for the SIU Alumni Association, also the editor of uh, SIU Alumni Magazine. And uh, I've got Pinkney Benedict with me, which I'll get to in just a moment. There are a couple of um, uh, housekeeping items I just wanted to say right up front. Uh, number one, uh, yeah, I know it's a it's it's kind of a weird time for everyone and uh, while our uh, our physical offices are closed, uh, we are still uh, responding to messages. So anyone out there who needs uh, something or has a question about uh, any uh, alumni programs, the status of uh, upcoming events uh, that we may have, uh, please go ahead. Uh, just uh, give us a main call at our number. Our line is six one eight. Four five three two four zero eight. Um, we are we are checking messages and we are responding to it. So we're we're still here for you. We're just uh, uh, like everyone else in the world. We're all trying to uh, work remotely. So uh, we'll we'll get to you as as soon as we can. Uh, the second thing I wanted to uh, share with everyone uh, first off was uh, just kind of the uh, uh, while we have kind of a uh, while we have kind of uh, put a, a pause on a lot of our fundraising activity uh, here uh, at the university, there is still one fund that we're uh, trying to raise some uh, money for at the moment. It is the uh, Saluki Care Student Emergency Fund. Um, it's, a, it's a fund, basically, we have a goal of about 200,000 that I think we, last I heard, we were probably about halfway uh, two at this moment, but um, uh, honestly, I know this is a this is a situation that's affected everyone um, uh, pretty drastically and some financially. Um, no pressure necessarily at all in anything, but this fund is here for people. If you are uh, in the fortunate enough position to be giving um, uh, to make a contribution to this, you can give. It is a Saluki funder. Dot SIU dot edu. These, this is an emergency fund that uh, kind of helps students with uh, some educational support. It, uh, some of it goes to the Saluki Food Pantry. Some of it assists with housing costs and off-campus jobs that have been suspended. There are a number of students who are just uh, like the rest of us, kind of out there and displaced on on a on a number of things right now. So uh, if you can, it's there. Um, but you know, like we say, uh, we understand. Uh, if you can, please please uh, donate to that. All right, uh, what we are talking about today uh, strictly is the um, virtual reality classroom initiative. And uh, this was kind of really started, I think by uh, Pinkney Benedict who's here, who, you know, d d despite what you might think when you're thinking about VR, he's, uh, he's an instructor in the uh, creative writing program over at SIU. and. Um, you know, we wanted to find a way to engage alumni virtually while we're all stuck at home. And, you know, there's there's a bunch of cool stuff that you can uh, kind of, uh, well, there's a bunch of cool stuff that happens at SIU that we find that we just don't always have the time to really dig into and highlight. And now seems that all we have is time uh, available to everyone. So I wanted to start off by letting kind of uh, Pinkney take it away as to what this initiative is. Well, thanks. Well, the, the virtual um, classroom initiative uh, uh, proper, I guess, was a was a fundraising uh, 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 project I did in the in the fall on the Saluki Funder website. And if folks don't know that that exists, there's a Saluki Funder website, and there are kind of a lot of neat projects uh, that folks are doing on campus and off campus there that you can support. And uh, we. Uh, we took 30 days and uh, 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 managed to raise enough money to uh, buy 23 virtual reality headsets, which gives me a class of 20 with a, a GA and, and a couple of spares. If we have to swap things out to be able to get <clears throat> and to you know get software and and stuff like that to be able to get an entire class into virtual reality, um, both for instruction. Uh, you know, we you know, give lectures in, in virtual reality and demonstrations and stuff like that. 
uh, but also for creation because the, the class is called VR narrative. Um, and, uh, you know, so their folks are creating things, they're building things in virtual reality environments. And um, as you said, I mean, this is not a, you know, this is a creative writing class. We're not computer scientists. We're not, uh, 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 you know, digital experts or anything uh, like that. I'm certainly not. I mean, my students teach me and show me stuff every day. Um, but, um, but, but the idea is, or one of the, one of the ideas, one of the primary things that's been driving me uh, is, to, is to sort of bridge what seems to me to have been a growing gap between the arts uh, and, and STEM. Um, you know, all, all narr narrative uh, forms, all media now are, I mean, it, it, they're all technological one way or another, right? That is, even if you think what you're doing is simply, you know, writing a story, it's transmission, it, it will always be translated into digital forms, it will always be distributed that way, it is, it is become a technological form. And I want our writers not just to be good writers, not just to understand the basics of story, but to understand the huge number of venues that are now available to them that weren't available, you know, 10, five, even two years ago. So it was to, to bring a whole class together in virtual reality. And, you know, we, we built toward that over the first half of the semester. And then when, you know, nobody came back from spring break, uh, it, you know, it just pushed us harder in that direction. And now, you know, we, we, we gather, uh, we gather all together, uh, you know, in, in VR now we got, uh, uh, and I, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that and I'll show a little footage of that later on, but, um, yeah, we're, we're a full on VR class now. I mean, we use zoom to organize things and make sure that everybody's together and on board and doing okay. And then we, we jump into VR for our class meetings. Yeah. And it, it, some of you, you probably recognize some of this has uh, taken place from uh, what, uh, what's happened uh, or what we wrote about in the magazine, the most recent issue of the alumni magazine uh, that you would see have seen. Um, it really is the the girl. I think when we were interviewing you uh, and the student you had, she is uh, she was a student who was crafting a story about um, uh, an issue with uh, sleep paralysis that right. she yeah. that she yeah. found. Yeah, yeah. so creating it, a, it, yeah, creating a, a, a I think it was a, a sleep paralysis simulator. Right, and, and, you know, for those of you, yeah, it's yeah, just one of those things. Know, yeah, it's kind of hard to describe, I guess. But then in VR, people will be able to sort of go through it and, and maybe maybe makes it a little more understandable, relatable. Right. And, and you had you had said, you know, the you know, VR is really the next step of immersing people into a story. Uh, just just kind of the way books took a, a way to immerse people into story. We went to, you know, movies and other right. sort of digital mediums. And now you really do feel like you are uh, you are in the experience when you when you are putting on a headset. When that's and one of the challenges of virtual reality um, and one of the challenges of a of a, a, a platform like this you know, when we're going to be talking about VR is trying to describe virtual reality to somebody is like trying to describe your own dreams, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, they can kind of get it, but they weren't there. Their grandma didn't have claws, you know what I mean? And so, and so there's a, a, a kind of disconnect and, but, it, you know, and people tend to think of it as well. It's just like a really big computer monitor that's right in your face. And it's not like that at all. I mean, it's, a, it's really a remarkable replacement of the outside world. It's more like a trance or something, right? I mean, you're not unaware that you're a body in the real world, but you, but your attention is all concentrated on and captured by the, the virtual world around you. And um, I mean, you know, if, if you know, I, I think we should just send virtual. I think everybody should have an you know an hour with a VR headset, and everybody yeah. would become a believer. Or a a, pretty much everybody. Yeah, I'll admit I was I was I I've always been a little skeptical of sure. the staying power of virtual reality, just because um, you know I I think a lot of the products that were put out before really now were really way ahead of their time the technology necessarily wasn't there to make that experience as immersive right. as it is. 
but you know, you put the uh, Oculus and uh, the, the, and we'll talk more about some of the gear later on, but right. what you put on my head that day was the Oculus Quest. Right. Well, is, well yeah. I know it hasn't been a consumer technology until quite recently. And that's right. one of the reasons I'm <clears throat> excited to be myself in the, in sort of the VR space and to be bringing my students in is this isn't, you know, we're not, um, uh, uh, you know, we're not picking up an established medium and trying to sort of meet the standard. You do it right, we can be, you know, the some of the folks who, you know, set the rules, some of the folks who, uh, 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 you know, kind of figure out where the, where the goalposts go and, and, you know, how do you tell a story? I mean, that was the first question of this VR narrative class, right? Was the students asked quite rightly, what's VR narrative, you know? And the mm -hmm. answer is, I don't know. You know, I know what a short story is. I know what a novel is. I know what a film is. I know what a TV show is. What's VR narrative? No idea. We're, you know, world's your oyster. It's, you know, and so, and so, you know, we, we actually get to explore that question of what it is. But once you experience the technology, and particularly now that it's in a consumer form, so that you can, uh, uh, it's not it's not quite so difficult. It's not uh, folks generally speaking see are persuaded that this is you know this is just part of that continuum that you mentioned from you know the epic poem to uh, the novel to film to television to AR, VR, what we're calling, you know, what we call XR, because who knows what it's going to be. I mean, you know, I, personally, I'm hoping for a slick, cool looking pair of glasses from Apple that I just put on and they weigh nothing and, you know, and they work. It's going to be a while, but, you know, it, it, it's not a fad. It's not a fad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was surprised that day. It's not, it's not as disorienting as I thought it would be. Everything sort of falls into the place where you think it should. My, my hands, even though they weren't my hands, they felt like my hands. The space I was in, actually the space I was in, we were just in kind of our small studio uh, space down in the alumni center, but the space that was painted for me or it came out right before me feels much larger than what it is. Actually, right. the more jarring thing is taking off the VR goggles yes. and realizing Oh wait! I've just been in my tiny, uh, tiny room or apartment this whole time. I feel like I've been on this expansive journey. Or yeah, out. exactly. I, I, you know, I, after I leave, having been in VR for a couple hours, I'll, I'll try to teleport places. You know, I'm like, why do I have to walk over there? That's so annoying. Right. Uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, no, no, no. It, it really does. It's, it's, it's a, it's a head trip. And these are, the, these are the kinds of questions that become really interesting, right? For the first artists who are first you know who are really in this space is you know what are the ethics of all this right what are the you know, given that it's such a persuasive medium right that um that it, you know it really does replace your 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 reality in a way that no other medium does um you know one of the challenges we're going to have and i think it's going to be a real challenge is not giving people ptsd in the stories that we create right not doing such a such a you know number on their heads that right. it, that it scars them now imagine being an artist who is at the very beginning of having that sort of creative power put in your hands right i mean that's 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 what we want as artists that's that's the place to be and now we have to figure out what are the ethical uses of it what do we you know what do we you know, what are we allowed to do what are we not allowed to do what's a good idea what's a bad idea and that's you know that's a that's a really exciting a really exciting place okay well why don't we do, and we we tested this out yesterday so we're, we're reasonably sure to work but why don't we start yeah, 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 yeah. Well, why don't we see. start easing people into uh what this experience is and kind of go with the uh, the ar sure uh, uh so what 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 you're probably going to see is you notice that table sitting behind Pinkney with that little uh card on it that's hard that's that's a that's an AR card. So Pinkney, show them what that does once you kind of. Okay, and this is a this is a uh, uh, this is a, a program that we have from a. And I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, screen share it to you, uh, but it's a program that we have from a company called Artie, and this is brand new, right? I mean, this is uh, you know we're 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 among the first users of this, and and uh, uh, so all right, let me. Um, 
bring up the streamer. Uh, and I'm probably going away from the. Uh, there we go. Uh, and I got a, I had a question in here just now. Explain what AR means. AR is essentially what you call uh, augmented reality. Correct. Yeah. Basically, it's meaning you are uh, superimposing uh, something that is not there onto the physical space, and that's what that card uh, will kind of help do. All right. You're seeing a, a terrifying frozen image of me. That's what. Yeah. Uh, and I may have to restart the. I'm going to have to restart that, but okay. no big deal. Sorry, but this this is the uh, the joy of using new uh, technology. Oh yeah. Well, we're all learning how to we're all learning how to work mobily. And that's that's been one of the pleasures, right? Of this, you know, this terrible thing has been, you know, the, the you know, there's so much learning to be done. Yeah. So uh, I, I, have a whole gonna, new, I have a whole new set of you know set of skills that I didn't have a couple weeks ago, kind of thanks to thanks to all this and working from home. Okay, there we have I had to stop my video to uh, uh, to, to fire up the the uh, and so now presumably and you'll have to confirm this for me because I uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm uh, not able to see it, but you should see sort of two uh, off to the side. It says XR at SIU present and future. Is that are you seeing that? No, I'm not. You are not. Okay, not. that's. Uh, but, but 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 no, I've just got the I've got the. See, this is how new all this is. Mm -hmm. Is I'm just figuring it all out too. Uh, let's see. All right. break out from the share sorry we did practice this i promise we did it worked in the uh, but you know <sighs> so we've got something coming back up now <laughs> all right beautiful we've got a black screen coming back up now oh that's because All right, now let's see if this works. Is it is it shared now? Yes, now you are now you are live. Okay, and you see XR at SIU, present yep. and future right here. Yep, we see it. Okay, very very good. Because <laughs> uh, otherwise, thanks everyone for holding with us for a moment while we. Oh uh, yeah, I was going to have to turn in my uh, my uh, VR uh, yeah my AR and VR. Uh, Okay, please move this window away from the shared application. All right, that is going to be a problem. Uh, let's see. So this is just a. <clears throat> it's basically what this is is a is a kind of. Um, uh, that, that box is still over you. If it. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's my problem. All go. right. Well, obviously, I should have practiced this more. My apologies. Okay. Here we go. I'll be able to do it on my. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right. So now, um, you can see it's it's a kind of uh, a PowerPoint essentially. It's a it's like a virtual reality PowerPoint where you can bring objects up in the space with you, and you can imagine how. <clears throat> you know, this allows you to, to uh, uh, you know, makes, makes the life of the teacher a little bit easier. So here, for instance, this is, uh, as I say, we're going to have to investigate the ethics of this kind of thing. You know, should, or should we be allowed to, uh, to show people terrifying objects? That, that is your face, right? That yeah. is my scanned face. And I'm, okay. what I'm showing you now is that it's not, this is not just an image. This is actually a manipulable uh, uh you know, 3D object that we can, mm -hmm. you know, we can 
change in in whatever way we like you know yeah. um and and that sort of thing so so there's a uh, uh you know that's one use of it is to be able to bring scanned objects into uh into the room and some of you may uh remember uh Okay. Well, so this is this is the ability to uh, this is the ability to bring in streaming video, okay. uh, right? So what, what we have here is a, is a YouTube page. Uh, that's Diane Carroll, um, whom some of you may remember. Uh, so so you can bring in streaming video, video of any kind, YouTube, you know what 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 have you. Again, just like you would in a classroom, except as a as essentially a physical object or a you know projected object into the room. Um, you can bring in images. Some of you may remember this young man from, uh, uh, if you've seen uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, Forever SIU and various fundraising, things like that. This is a student of mine, really, a really nice guy. And uh, he, he's sort of become the face of VR on campus. If you walk around campus, there are various uh, uh, sort of posters of him you know, stuck to the ground. Uh, and now we've, we've decided to go ahead and fully cyberize him so we can send him out uh, wherever we want. And this is uh, him as a, uh, uh, in, in his fully VR, uh, fully VR setting here. And I'll scale him up a little bit just because okay. he's so uh, impressive. Yeah, there he is. Okay. So is that streaming all right on on your end? Is that it, uh, Caleb? It's uh, it's it's streaming just fine. I, uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little terrifying. But anyway, there he is, Jay. He can we, dance. We haven't quite crossed the uncanny valley with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, it's uh, so so you can imagine how um, you know as this as this technology becomes more common, easier to use, um, <clears throat> simpler. You turn you turn the the zoom the two dimensional zoom space into a much more three dimensional space right mm -hmm. a space that you can bring in objects um, and and stuff like that and we're we're three D beings yeah we're you know we're made for three dimensions and so even as effective as something like um, zoom is two dimensionally right and it's a great tool it's a miraculous tool to have available to us now. But even as terrific as it is, um, it, it's still just two dimensional. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like people does. I mean, we have two eyes for a reason, right? These two eyes at a certain separation because we see the world as, as objects that are close and objects that are in a distance. And, and 2D doesn't really relay that very well. All right, I'm gonna come back to the Zoom and I will just leave you, uh, let you gaze here at uh, Dancing Jay for a moment. And so, someone had asked is whether or not, you know, actors uh, should be concerned that uh, this is going to replace them uh, in the future. And I, I think some of that discussion has already kind of taken place. The uh, Some of the latest Star Wars movies, uh, Peter Cushing, who's been dead for sure. quite a while, he, he was pretty much scanned and uh, put into, uh, what was that movie, Rogue One? Right. No, no, no. And, and, uh, and I guess they did the same thing with, uh, uh, with um, uh, Carrie Fisher and... Um, you know, and they've, and they, you know, they youngify people and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I actually don't know that much about it. Right. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a short story guy. I'm a, a you know, I'm a, I'm a story maker. And so yeah. I'm not, not really in that business. Um, but, I, I, you know, it would be a worry for me, I think, you know, I mean, uh, there's actually a film about that um, with uh, 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 Robin, uh, Robin Wright. Uh, who's just a terrific actress that folks know her from House of Cards, maybe. And um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, The Company, something like that. But it's about, it's actually, she plays herself. She plays Robin Wright, the actress, and they, you know, make scans of her and stuff like that. Essentially, she, for a huge amount of money, she agrees never to be in films again and to be replaced by her digital equivalent. Um, and, uh, uh, and sort of the regrets of that and uh, that sort of thing. But, it, but that... It's, I think that's a question we've got a while before we before we have to deal with. We will eventually have to deal with it, though. Right, and you know, I, I, 
I would say, you know, they've, they've already, you can't look at it necessarily as in movies because for years, you know, they've been scanning people into a lot of uh, high-end video games uh, that come out that are uh, almost cinematic spirit experiences right. themselves. There's a whole range of, you know, acting talent out there that really specifically works in that realm of sure. digital entertainment. Video well, just, just as there are voice actors for animation, right. um, just as there, I mean, that is so, so it, it may be that our, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the skills in, in the same way that the, the people who were great stars in um, silent film, right? But then when the era of the talkies came around, you know, people who didn't have mellifluous voices ended up not being the big stars of the, of the sound uh, period of film, right? It may, we may transition into people with different skills, but a guy like Andy Serkis, for instance, I mean, you know, I'm sure he's a fine actor, but he's not a leading man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but Andy Serkis has been, you know, he's been Gollum in lots of, you know, in all those big films. He played, uh, uh, he played King Kong. Uh, you know, I mean, Andy Serkis has a career that he would never have had in another era, or maybe he'd have been a circus acrobat or something like that. Uh, but, you know, so, so it's not really, it's not just, oh, we will put the, this group of people out of work and replace them with machines. Like what we do as humans is irreplaceable, right? Or I mean, what we do as creative humans is irreplaceable. Anything that can be automated, I think probably will eventually be automated. I don't know that, I think it's what we do, but that, that, but that, that moves us, or my hope is, and maybe I'm overly optimistic, what it does is it creates opportunities for a new group of people. Right. So let's let's move on. Let's move a little deeper into this. And, uh, you know, let's 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 blow people's minds a little bit more and let's go into kind of the virtual virtual avatar. Oh, OK. Yeah, and that'll again, you know, my apologies for the slow transitions here, but I'm going between lots of different uh, 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 lots of different pieces of uh, software. And so yeah, I mean, for, for our first live stream, we really we really did try a, a very technical set up to share all this stuff but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah like you said you cannot describe get me cannot awake describe a little while yes. people yeah, um, uh, yeah what, what we're kind of moving to right now is uh, in addition to you know basically superimposing uh, uh, digital objects into the real world you can basically superimpose a uh, kind of a mask over yourself um, in the way of uh, just kind of having a digital avatar I think Pinkney showed a little bit of it um, in terms of the fact that he had his uh, his face scanned on there, but you know, um, there and I'll are, be I'll be back with you here in just a second. All right, as you'll see shortly, there there are kind of some other things that you can that you can do with it as well. Uh, someone put in the chat as to whether or not this was a danger for replacements of uh, athletes as well, and I mean that you know I. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you that one necessarily. Like I, like like we said, the uh, the the human the human form, the human body. Is, uh, there, there's always that. That's the reference point for everything that we try to create uh, digitally and virtually. So, you know, I I I, I think we uh, we'll, we'll be around for a while still, uh, calling the shots on on how this stuff uh, goes. Okay. Now we will see if this is, if I have managed to, to get this up and working uh, the way it needs to go. Uh, okay, boom. Yeah, there we go. Right. So, and I'll yeah. tell you, I'll tell everyone right now, uh, Pinkney kind of did this yesterday without warning. <laughs> it sort of made me wonder whether or not I hadn't been inside for just a little too long. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's it's a relatively easy thing, and I don't have anything hooked up to uh, to track my hands. So I, my hands are just going to be, and I talk a lot with my hands, so my hands will just be down uh, to their side a little bit. But um, uh, uh, so, but this is this is the you you have the ability to be pretty much, you know, what you, you know, whatever you would prefer to be. And for instance, I will show you now in, in my true form as my students uh, 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 believe it to be. Yes, yeah. this, this is what you brought up yesterday. That's right, what... right, right, exactly. So this is, this is me, uh, uh, this, is, this is what I'm not hiding 
uh, when I'm not hiding who I actually am. This, this is the professor of the week before finals. Or, right, 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 exactly, exactly. And you can see there's lip syncing and it's not, it's not perfect, but all of this stuff is uh, in fairly early stages now. And it's, you know, for this all to be done, for this kind of compositing to be done and the AR compositing that I just showed you, all that being done in real time and broadcast via uh, Zoom is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and um, you know, I got to admit, I think I think I just saw a kind of a spike in our viewership on our Facebook live feed because there's there's clearly a a, a demon in the window talking. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Hey. Yeah. And you can change. You can change your voice. You can. You know. I mean, you can. You can. Uh, you can present yourself, right? And, and you know, in art now, in the academy, in society more generally, you know, there are all these questions of identity and you know, and representation and authenticity, and authority. And this is, you know, this is a great tool, right? You can be, you can be, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, what you want to be as long as you learn to use the tools and learn how to how to create uh, the thing that you, you know, that you want to be. Um, so that's, you know, that's again, where the human aspect of it comes in, right? That who I am, what I look like, what I sound like, um, is, is no longer, uh, dispositive in, in a world where we're, we're communicating in this way, right? I have, you know, I love, like, I look at this and I shake my head like that. And I'm like, wow, I have hair. Yeah. That's... How exciting is that? Right. <laughs> and I have pretty hair. Uh, you know, so I, I can't get enough of just of tossing my hair, tossing your head back and forth. Yeah, because yeah, there's a daring to dream. All right. Um, yeah, it's. I think one of the one of the other questions we had coming in is: uh, Is there any project, projection for how some of this technology will affect medicine? And I think you know, yes. in, in a lot of ways, some of it already has. I think uh, even our own school of medicine is uh, utilizing VR technology. Uh, right now. Yep. No, there's a, there's a, uh, here, let me see if I can come back. Uh, if I can come back to myself again. Right. The, uh, the anime uh, girl might not be the authority on this. But. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, and I'm, I am not a, an authority on it, but I, 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 I know a couple of things. Um, one of the, I mean, one of the things that is, uh, uh, um, I mean, there you know there are programs called Organon. There are you know on uh, there there are programs I have right now for the Oculus Quest uh, that um, allow you to do things. Uh, there we go. Uh, that allow you to do things like um, you know dissect a frog, dissect a fetal pig, uh, you know dissect a cat, which uh, that that distressed me. Um, but you know so you know so you can do those sorts of things in virtual reality. You can. You know, you can, you know, I've got a program called Wrench that, you know, I rebuilt a, 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 a little four cylinder uh, 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 VW engine the other day, right? You know, it's in all its parts. And I, you know, it's a great, nice, clean uh, garage that you're in. You have, uh, uh, you know, you have impact wrenches. You got, you know, all the tools that you could possibly want. I put headers on the thing. Um, you know, so, so there really isn't, if you, if, if you, I am hard put to imagine an aspect of human life that is not where that, that it will not be possible to use this technology. And our tendency as humans is where technology can be used, it will be used. And there are already industries all over the world that are training um, folks, you know, I mean, you can, you can train people, you can train people for, you know, sort of, you know, to how to deal with other people, right? How do you run a cash register? How do you talk to customers? How do you, you know, you can, you can get simulations of being on stage facing an audience, yes, and learning to, you know, to express yourself and that sort of thing and not be terrified of being in that environment. Um, simulation is just a great way of training. Right. I mean, we, and we do that all the time. I mean, you look back, we have World War II, World War One. I, I think they actually built a plane simulator that was a box with a, you know, stick with levers and stuff like that. That's just simulation. That's just virtual reality. Now we have the technology to make the simulations not one for one. Right. I mean, you know, it'll never be quite one for one, but to make the simulations 
real enough that you feel the consequences of failure and you feel the pleasure of success. And that's what teaching is, right? Is you model something, folks try it, they fail, and the failure doesn't feel good. And then they try it again and they've gotten better at it. And this time they succeed and that success feels good. And so they go on to the next stage right? That's all, that's all learning is, generally speaking. And so now we have, we have the tools to, to make those simulations very, very convincing. And so, yes, medicine, absolutely. Um, I mean, and they're already, people are already operating remotely through robots, right? It's not hard to imagine being, you know, just being in VR rather than watching, you know, the, what the robot's doing on a, on a 2D screen, just simply being able to pretty much embody the robot. Okay. So why don't we move into now we're going to kind of get in really deep into the, the experience. And I think you've got some pre-recorded video of some sure. of the PR sessions that you had. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll have to go into screen sharing again with uh, for this. But and again, 2D can't really capture it. But I want to show you some of the reactions folks have to to VR and uh, and some of the ways we're using it. And the first thing the first thing I'll show um, is uh, I, I want to show you the um, uh, uh, my class, the the uh, reaction of my class to uh, um, uh, or, or the progression of my class uh, through uh, the the uh, through the stages we've gone through uh, this semester. It's just a, just a short video. Okay. Um, and I will, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, again. And yeah, just, just to let everyone know, I, like I said, I, I experienced VR uh, early on. Um, well, when you let her not, let put that on my head. Early on, like I said, it wasn't half as disorienting as, you, know, as you, you thought it would be and everything kind of fell in place as to where you think it would. So it doesn't take long to get sucked in, to get acclimated to that environment. Luckily, no, I, no, I, no, it, it really I wasn't doesn't. the one to experience any, you know, like motion sickness or anything else. I can't say that, you know, that wouldn't be the case with everyone else or, you know, with another person trying it, but it's, it's not as disorienting as disorienting as you think it would and I, I kind of see the danger the, the 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 danger and the pull of you know just kind of living in that space it, it, I mean it's you know I mean for instance there's you know why if you have a you know two hundred dollar VR headset why would you ever buy a television right because you've got you know your Swiss chalet with a 110 inch curved TV screen you know which shows Netflix perfectly Right. I mean, there, there really are aspects of life that are enhanced. Well, so is the, is the video up? Have I got the screen share? You've got, yeah, you've got to capture up right now. Okay, great. Well, so this is just a video of three different stages of the VR narrative class. So this is early in the semester when we were all still meeting normally, when none of us had ever heard of uh, coronavirus. And uh, this, is, this is the day everybody got and unpacked uh, the, uh, the VR headsets for the class. And then we moved from that to, um, uh, to a Zoom meeting. And then I'll show you in 2D what the VR environment looks like. And this is just a, just a, uh, you know, about a, about a little minute and 15 seconds or so. And so I'll just, I'll try to shut up while I'm playing. Yay! Say yay for Oculus! <laughs> yay! <laughs> I love that perfectly spontaneous show of, show of uh, emotion and gratitude. That was really nice. Thanks. And here we go. There's the GA. There's the intern or whatever you are. The real GA. One, two, three. VR. VR. Okay. okay. Well, it's all to be together. Um, excellent. Thanks. Uh, It's the oh, truth, but <gasps> now I don't know who okay, you are. Okay, it's just, just Comforterra week. Like okay, I see. The Sims, okay? <laughs> the Sims. Like you, we love you, Tara. Which, which Sims? Like Sims 1, Sims 2, or Sims 3? Sims 1. Hooray for VR! Hooray for VR! Hooray for VR! Why 6? Satan. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> true. All right. So that's a, uh, that's a, uh, you know, you can see, you know, it's a real pleasure that, you know, when, when the, the VR part stop starts and, uh, you know, it's, as I say, in 2D, it's a little uh, strange looking, but right. um, when I enter a classroom as a teacher and the students are, uh, uh, you know, sort of all gathered together and, and chattering and having fun. And in this case, you know, making graffiti, spray painting the walls, uh, that kind of thing. I know that's going to be a good class, right? And, you know, you come into this VR class and everybody's, you know, they're running around, they're marveling at their new bodies, they're, you know, checking out, you know, where they can go, they can get up on the balconies, they can write things on the, you know, on the whiteboard, they can, you know, those sorts of things. It's a, it's a, the, the energy of it, particularly in this time of isolation, right, the fact that, that we can be together in, in an embodied way, even if not fully embodied, the fact that we can feel as though we're all in a room together in three dimensions, not just a series of two-dimensional images, is uh it's profound and the students you can tell you can tell i think in that clip uh assuming it came through okay how glad they were to see each other right and to see each other's avatars like what do you look like what do i look like now right what name have i chosen what you know and uh yeah there's 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 real excitement to it and it's as a teacher that's that's all i can ask for right is that my students are excited to be around each other and excited to be doing what we're doing and what's what what's the specific name of this course that you were just showing? Uh, well, that that's we our um, our uh, virtual classroom for the rest of the semester has been donated to us by a company called uh, Doghead Simulations, uh -huh. and they run they run um, a, a thing called Rumi R U I M R U M I I, and Rumi allows us to build as many rooms as we want uh, in VR, you know, you know, we can have that was the hub, which is a kind of um, large circular gathering space. There are small seminar rooms. There are large seminar rooms. There's a, you know, sort of Japanese uh, uh, Zen garden. There's a, uh, uh, you know, there's a hangar. There's an, just an open white space. There's an abstract space. And we can, you know, everybody can have their own room to work in if they want, or they can have a room, you know, where their teams together. And that's, you know, and you can bring media into all that. You can bring in videos, sound, 3D objects. Um, uh, you know, uh, you, you can make 3D drawings into those spaces, right? And that's, that's simply impossible in Fainer, right? Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a whole new way we can do things. Yeah, it's, you know, here's your own room. Here are six rooms that you can have to do this project that you want to do. Yeah, if the, and the, I mean, if someone were looking for the the this course, what, I mean, what's the name of the course that you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the course is English 493 VR Narrative. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and I invite folks if you have access to VR, even if you don't, you can Rumi. You can play just like a um, just like a first person video game on a flat screen computer, right? You just download it's uh, uh, download the the R U M I I the Rumi app. If you, you know, if people email me, I'll invite you to come visit us. And so even if you don't have VR, you can kind of, you can scoot around the room. It's 2D, but you can see what we're doing and, and visit the class and talk to the students. I would, I'd love to give folks that, uh, that uh, opportunity. What, what kind of students are you attracting right now? What kind of, from what kind of disciplines are they they're coming in from? Because uh, yeah, it's a I mean, creative got, writing course, but who, who right, is Right, right. But we've got, we've got folks from, I mean, I, you know, I don't always know where everybody's coming from, but you know, we've got, you know, I know we've got, we've got folks from theater. We've got, I don't think, I actually think the majority of the students in that class are probably not English majors. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so we're bringing folks in, we're bringing folks in from all over the arts and humanities. Um, you know, I'd like to get, we, you know, we have, we have, uh, uh, we have a young woman in there who's from, uh, she, I think she's architecture, um, right? And because architecture is profoundly uh, affected and influenced by all of this, the ability to, you know, I mean, the bulk of home tours right now, right? If you're going to sell a home right now, you've got to have some sort of virtual experience of that home available to sell it. So, you know, and to, to build buildings, to, to be able to envision all of these things. Um, so, yeah, so we're, so we're bringing them in from all over. And, and again, you know, and, and I want, I want tech people, I want non-tech people, uh, you know, this is, you know, there's, there's a great sort of, um, 
uh, flattening, right, going on. There's a real democratization happening now in, in the arts. And I think more generally, um, and, you know, the more folks, the more different kinds of folks we have in classes like this, the, the better it's going to be for all of us. Okay. And uh, if you could, let's, let's look at some more footage here, because I think you had one that you had done with your, just kind of between you and your daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, this yeah, might I, answer a question that I see is this, if someone has a VR headset, how do they interact in a, in a kind of a virtual app reality? How do they hang out? And I think this, this clip of you and your daughter, I think in the, it's- And this of, is another, uh, right? This is, a, this is a program called Engage VR, which is rooms and classrooms and stuff like that, very much like uh, Rumi. And these companies are, are, as you can imagine, doing a lot of, uh, uh, doing a lot of business right now. Uh, okay, so yeah, this was this is just a, a short uh, class, um, and I, I, I won't necessarily hold, show the whole thing, but I'll. All right, because I, th I think it shows the one thing you, you got to keep in mind in this is though, it, it, you know, from everything it looks like you're in your same room. I think you said your daughter lives in Texas. Right. No, precisely that it's. Um, all right, so I'm going to share the screen here. Okay. Put my Zoom skills to. Uh, put my zoom skills to the test here we're getting better all the time i hope that that is correct i like to think that that is correct um ba -ba -ba -ba. okay so here goes the screen share and yeah so this is i'm in the audience uh you know my daughter is in texas we're in a we're in a nicely appointed um auditorium uh in engage vr So the lights have come on, and there's the uh, stage. The curtains are opening, and she slides out like Michael Jackson. It's very cool. We are going to do a counted breathing and body awareness exercise. So take a minute and just find an awareness of your body as a whole, so I'm from the top of your head down to where the soles of your feet are in contact with the ground. Take a breath without judging how you're breathing. Just take a nice inhale, hold the breath for a moment, and exhale. For your next breath, I want you to breathe in through your nose and imagine that the air is passing down through past the bottom of your lungs and filling a bowl that sits down in the bottom of your stomach. And you're going to breathe in, hold, and then exhale out to my count. Inhale, two, three, four, and hold the breath. Two, three, four, and exhale. And I'm going to skip forward a little bit. And just okay. so you can see how detailed the, cool. the uh, avatars are here. And you, may, most of you don't know my daughter, but that really looks like my daughter. I mean, I would, I would recognize her uh, if I, if I uh, uh, saw her. And there's, you know, there's some uncanny valley going on. <laughs> uh, so, um, all right. All right. Uh, don't see any new, I don't see any new questions that have come in at this point. So I, I wanted to get a little bit into what the, the gear that's out there, the VR gear that's out there on the market at the moment. Um, uh, Ashley, or unless you have any other, unless you have any other uh, clips that you want to, you want to show at the moment. No, 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 that's, that's fine. That, that's, you know, these, that, that kind of gets it. I mean, what that one gets at, I hope is, uh, the embodiment, right? That, that you could follow her movements were not recorded, although you could record them. You know, she was in real time doing those breathing exercises, moving her arms, you know, the, the attitude of her body. I was moving my arms in time with hers. Um, and so it's a real, it's a real embodied form. Now I am having trouble. Well, all I'm seeing is meeting controls for our meeting. I'm not. Well, I'm, all I'm seeing is a traffic cone. So <laughs> I think you might well, still be sharing this. Oh, I'm still I'm still sharing. Sorry about that. Yeah, I wonder how I stop sharing without being. Can you force me to stop sharing? Well, that's a good question. I probably could. But oh, here we go. Sorry, my apologies. Yeah, see, this is you can see what you know. This is this is a this is a learning curve for all of us. Right. Just to figure out how how to do those things 
effectively, uh, you know, that we do all the time in a, in a regular class. Yeah, but it, but it's such an embodied thing, VR, right? I mean, you're in a place and you have a body, you have arms, you have, uh, you know, what you're, you, what you're accustomed to. And that, that changes everything about the, the feeling of presence that you have. Okay. Yeah, let's, and the, the gear that's out there right now, because, sure. you know, if, if you're not familiar with it, which, you know, I, I was sort of peripherally aware of what was uh, available out there, but, you know, you got a range of um, technology that you can purchase. They range from pretty high-end headsets that attach, that need to attach to pretty powerful PCs. Right. Uh, to PC the headsets anymore. that do the gaming consoles. Um, yeah. I think, what what is that that's in your hand right, right. now? Right, so this... If anybody is thinking about getting into VR, this is the Oculus Quest. It costs $399. This is literally, I mean, except for the charging cable, this, it, you know, it's, it works from Wi-Fi. This and these controllers, these are your hands in VR. Um, that's all there is to it, 400 bucks. And it is, it is the first really mm, accessible, uh, 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 accessible commercial, like consumer VR product. Oh. And, um, and, and it's, it's really remarkable. They, it's been out, I don't know, six or seven months, maybe a little more than that, not quite a year. And it's by far the most popular uh, VR headset ever. Um, and actually they're a little hard to find right now. Like if you go to Oculus, maybe they've got them back in stock now, but you can get them, you know, Oculus, Amazon, B and H, you know, any technology store. Uh, but they're having trouble. They're having trouble uh, keeping them in stock. They're selling them as fast as they can, uh, as fast as they can make them. And it's, it's, it's really good, high quality uh, virtual reality. And, it's yeah, and I've, I've described it. It's kind of like what it brings uh, and, Oddly enough, it is based on mobile technology. I think it's the Snapdragon processor. Yeah, that's right, running. exactly. It's, a, it's really it is it is mobile technology that's running that, and it kind of has the ease and simplicity of yeah. you know any any tablet. I mean, um, using using the the Quest is as simple as that. And then uh, I should have picked these up before I blinded myself, but you know is 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 as simple as this, right? And now all I have to do is push the on button. And 30 seconds later, I'm in VR and and already doing what I need to do. It's like it's you know it's like putting on a, a baseball cap basically. Um, I mean, if you had a baseball cap that made you blind and it weighed about two pounds. Um, so, uh, but 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 I mean, it's really it's really good accessible uh, accessible hardware. Yeah, you know, it's it's only getting more popular, and I think they're they're really unlocking ways that they can use utilize the technology. That I think the Quest itself has pretty much its own ecosystem and store from which you can just right from the device select buy download uh, software for it as well. So you can download yeah. a number of games or educational experiences. And there are lots. I mean, you can you can go to you know you can National Geographic has these great. Uh, 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 experiences like experiencing um, um, uh, experiencing Antarctica, experiencing uh, Machu Picchu, stuff like that. I mean, they really are. I mean, they they they're really amazing experiences, and so many of them are free. And so many people right now are making things free or heavily discounted. Right, and maybe I said this earlier, but I should thank them because they're you know we have this whole semester free. Like they they just said. You know, it's a it is a hard time. You have a really good use case for our, uh, you know, for our uh, uh, server space. We'll ju we're just going to give this to you. Um, so you know, so it's a it's a great time to to be getting into this stuff. And it's also it you know you can be it's it's a good social medium. I know that's hard to imagine, but it's a remarkable social medium to be able to gather in rooms with other people. You can go to Ant Antarctica. Um, and if we're going to, if we, if you still want to do the, um, the, uh, tethered VR and I can show people VR, I can show them uh, Google earth, um, VR, which is, a, which is an amazing, it gives you the amazing ability to be elsewhere. Uh, yeah. And I had a question in there about, uh, audio, how that works with the VR headsets. And I know nobody knows, nobody yeah, knows well, how it works. So this is, uh, the, the, this headset, I mean, you can attach headphones, right? If you really want to be immersed and away from everybody get a pair of head uh, noise canceling headphones and just plug them into this headset and boom you are gone 
but but it, normally the sound comes from somewhere. And I don't when, know, I, when I put on when I put on the headset, I thought you actually had put headphones on me right, right, exactly. it because oh, I couldn't really tell exactly. where the sound was coming yeah, from. The whole thing. But, the reason I love all this stuff is because it's like magic, right? I mean, yeah. one of the one of the things about being a non technical person, you know, who who is learning to take advantage of this stuff is it's perfectly fine with me if it's all just magical, right? Like I put this on, there's sound. You put it on a student, turn it on. There, the first question is, where's the sound coming from? We don't know. It's being magically projected into your brain by Oculus, and uh, it's wonderful. It's a company secret, I guess, for right now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's obviously it's built into the headset somewhere, but I can't find like the external thing that does that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you've asked the, it's one of the great mysteries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what, I mean, if they, that's, that's kind of the most popular version out there. There's also some that's a little lower. There's the, I think the Oculus Go. The or... Go and the Go is a good capable headset. They're, they're deeply discounted now. You can probably get one for, you know, 150 bucks or less. Um, and it's, it doesn't have six degrees of freedom, right? It's, it's, you sit still, it's mainly for watching media. Yeah, I mean, it's good for other things. You can, you know, Rumi works on it, for instance. Um, you know, you can, you know, there are things you can do, but it's it's a brilliant device for watching, you know, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, things like that on a, on a vast, a truly vast curved screen in a beautiful environment, right? And that's where, you know, you put on those noise-canceling headphones and, you know, your, your you know, uh, two thousand uh, dollar plasma TV becomes useless to you. Much, it's a it's a great way to watch media. Okay, uh, yeah, and then you could step up from. Uh, I mean, you could step up in into the Oculus range as well, where you need to be a little more hardwired into uh, uh, a PC. I know there's one from right. uh, Sony for yeah. the PlayStation as well. Yep, this is the. Yeah, I've got now. I've got PSVR right over there. I'm. Yeah, I, my uh, home office now, I've got so much VR, got much more VR than I have R. Um, but this is, yeah, this is looks really similar, but this is the Oculus Rift S, which is the, and you can see this tether, it's tethered to a monster uh, PC over here. And that's, this is really like a developer's uh, uh, device. Like if you want to develop for VR, this is what you want. But if you're developing for VR, my advice would be develop for the Quest because the Quest is the is the really wildly popular headset right now. Okay. And what what is what is the uh, what is the Rift set you back at? Well, the Rift headset is uh, you know that headset I just showed you is exactly the same price as the uh, uh, as the Quest is. It's three ninety nine. Yeah. It's just the, the PC is really the really the expensive part. Okay. Uh, and the great thing about the Quest is actually if you own a Quest, if you buy a Quest now and, and then later get a, a powerful PC that can run VR, you just need a USB-C cable. It's a very particular USB-C cable, uh, you know, costs 25, 30 bucks. But uh, you, you can actually cable that into USB-C on whatever computer you buy later and you've got a full on, uh, you've got a full on development uh, set up just, just like the Rift S. Okay. Um, I guess, well, I, I have an R schedule. Now we're really into the advanced stuff. Are we gonna try a, a, some live demoing of, you know, what it's like to kind of step in? Yeah, sure. Well, you know, we'll, I'll, 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 I'll take a crack at that and, and see, uh, uh what i can show you but but you know we, we did not test this out yesterday so and i only had a little time this morning but we will see uh and what i thought i could do is just demo um google earth vr again it's free so much of this stuff is free it's google earth like you have on your um on your desktop but it's all around you and again the difference that that makes to its believability and its immersion is astonishing so stand by to move everything out of my play area. Right. And, and, and the important, what, what he's going to kind of demonstrate here at this point is you, you do kind of need to outline a play space for yourself when you're doing this VR. So, and the quest will uh, kind of allow you to draw uh, either a circle or an area around yourself. And I think how, how, how big a space can you set up with one 
headset, did you say? Well, the Quest actually can be quite large. Uh, you know, I mean, the Quest, if you've, you, you know, you can, you can take like half a base, basketball uh, court with okay. the Quest, I think. Uh, you know, down to, or you can also just set it for standing, right? Everything works within that full range of movement. You can either just stand or sit and pretty much everything works or, you know, in the larger space you have, the more you can actually physically move. And the physical movement is a good thing to build into it because that's how it becomes embodied, right? That's how you, you end up actually feeling like you're in the place is there's more of a one for one correspondence. You take a step and, you know, and, and the, uh, uh, and your avatar takes a step and that really increases the, the physicalizing of it. All right. So let's try Google Earth VR. I had hoped actually also to be able to, uh, bring in uh, the feed from the he uh, from the from my webcam so that you could see not just what I'm seeing, but what I'm doing, but I'm not gonna, if I try a little... to do that, I'm, I'm just gonna kill the whole thing. And so we'll just okay. do it simple. Maybe we'll do that, we'll do that another time. All right, so here we go, ba -ba -ba. Google Earth VR. Okay, is that is that share up? You're, you're seeing the Google Earth VR uh, screen now? Yes, we are. Okay, so I'll, I will first go uh, someplace pretty familiar to most of the folks who are watching. Uh, and kind of, kind of the, uh, the neat thing about this is that once you draw your space around yourself, it'll give you, the headset will give you a warning if you're about to jump out of that. Yeah, and absolutely. If you do so jump great. out of it, suddenly you're, you're, you're seeing the actual room around you, which can be a little disorienting. And you, so now you see, your, I hope you're seeing a horizon. There's the rising sun. Uh -huh. we'll, change it, we'll, make it, uh, we'll make it noon time instead of dawn. And then down in front of me, uh, maybe folks in the audience recognize these. All right. Yeah, Jacob, you, you're, seeing the, you're seeing the towers now? Yes, we are. Okay, great. I just want to make sure it's actually showing you what I think it is. Uh, and, and so really what we've got here is a beautiful model of Carbondale. And you can see and you can see the, the, the fields uh, stretching out pretty much forever. There's uh, Campus Lake. Um, and we'll, we'll go down a little bit closer here. Uh, and you can see just like Helicopter Ride, there's the Delight Morris statue, the Shryock, Altgeld. Um, there's the fabulous Fainer where I've had my office for the last 13 years. Um, there's the uh, Student Services Building and the, uh, the uh, uh, Student Center. And the other thing you can do, these are just models. These are 3D models. They're reasonably convincing, but they're not exactly realistic. But what you can do is if you want to see, so now you're in front of the SSB, and you bring your uh, left hand up to your face and you can see that globe there. Mm -hmm. And now you're inside a, a 3D photosphere. And so in exactly the place that you are in the model, you're there, uh, uh, you're, you're there in the photosphere and you can look around and see what the place looks like in a photograph. And you take it down and there's the model. And you can see how the model matches very closely what the reality looks like. And so it's a great way to explore uh, to explore places, SIU. I really want to figure out a way for us to be able to give um, campus tours of SIU um, and Carbondale, all, you know, all of Carbondale. Right, and I mean, this is, this is a pretty, Pretty neat tool to be able to show someone who is interested in what it what it looks like at SIU and what the community is like, and you can kind of get a sense of place for uh, what you're coming on to. Yes, you absolutely can. You can essentially just walk down the middle of the street uh, in Carbondale and look around you, um, just as though uh, you were there. So, and it's not obviously it's not just Carbondale. Um, go to Rio, uh, and here we are. This is Rio at night. I don't know what the resolution is like, but maybe you can see those stars. And there's yeah. the Christ the Redeemer uh, statue, um, and they're spread out below us uh, in the nighttime 
is uh, the addition air. And then if you say, well, nighttime, I can't really see the things I want to see, then you just move the sun and it's noontime and here you are on the mountain. Um, and there's the famous statue and you can change its scale and how close you are to it, uh, you know, depending on how you, uh, you know, how you want to look at it. Simply move your view around. And so, and, and again, you know, this is, this is all around me. And here's what a photograph looks like um, of this place. And these are folks, folks just put their uh, pictures up. You just put your, your photo spheres, your 360 photos up on Google Earth and they, they uh, attach themselves to these places. And this is this is a pretty handy thing to have when you're uh, otherwise stuck in the house, I imagine. Right, precisely. I mean, you know, and, it, and it's as close as I'll probably ever get to, you know, going to Hong Kong or Rio or uh, Madrid. And, and those, those uh, particularly those cities are really well modeled. But I mean, it's it's amazing how well modeled even something like even a small town like Carbondale is. It's all there. You can you can take a tour around Carbondale and then take that same tour and it would be recognizably the same place. And I imagine these these models are just kind of based on the existing photographs that right that they this is a this is a technique and we're using this in the VR narrative class some too. It's a technique called photogrammetry where if you have enough high resolution overlapping photographs of something an object or a place or a person from enough angles, you can create a you can create a, a, a three dimensional digital object, and then yeah, and you can you can three D print it as well and, and stuff like that. But it's uh yeah, it's it's these are these are all derived from uh, from high resolution uh, high resolution photographs. Yeah, and uh, the the uh, I think maybe the probably the, the neatest thing for us. Uh, SIU as a as a whole on this VR thing is just how uh, much farther ahead of the curve we are than a lot of places in utilizing uh, this kind of technology for classroom learning or just in terms of just uh, giving students a different experience. No, we are. I mean, we we uh, uh, we're you know we're doing pretty well. We you know we, there was an Apple rep who uh, came down through the the good offices of uh, CTE and Carla Berry. Uh, uh, I guess it was last spring, uh, came down and observed what we were doing, observed our classes and said, you know, you're, you're, you're ahead of every other university in Illinois. And that was, you know, that was really pleasing to hear that we, you know, we're, you know, what we're doing is, uh, you know, we're not just, we're not just on the, on the trail of other people We're you know, we're, we're really, we're really breaking trail here. Um, so tell me what, what kind of future, and you talked a little bit about using this to bring students to campus virtually. What, what kinds of things can we expect to see, um, uh, particularly from SIU on, on this front, maybe in the near future or farther than that? What, what's well, the, I know right what now of... that the, that the um, communications and marketing folks, uh, Todd Durmeyer, who's a, who's a, a really uh, terrific uh, technologist and, and videographer over there, He's working on a, a, a 360 degree tour of campus. So you, like the photo spheres in Google Earth, you'll be able to, and, and you, you can access these, and these will be video too, uh, not just stills, but, but actual video. Pretty much anywhere on campus and actually embody it. And not just in a VR headset, right? But video, 360 video can be shared and we have a channel uh, that has a bunch of them up. 360 video, you can watch it on your phone. You just go to YouTube or wherever the 360 video source is, maximize it on your phone, and then you can move the phone around, right? Just like panning it, tilting it, and look at that at that uh, 3D film or uh, 3D video or, or 360 uh, still, and you can look all around. You, you don't just have to look at what the you know, the camera was looking at in a, in, you know, in a conventional video or picture. You can look at anything that's around you anywhere. You can do it with your phone. You can do it um, in the YouTube app or whatever video app you're using on your PC. You just drag around. You just click and drag with your mouse. Um, it's, uh, so it's fully accessible. And then, of course, the best way to see it is in something like the Oculus Quest. 
And are there other classes that are uh, thinking about or starting to that are using this to the, yes, there are kind of lots review. of folks there are lots of folks on campus now who are who are doing research and teaching uh this material there's a group uh it's an informal group but it's become to my mind indispensable um called the xr collective uh on campus and that's that's a group that meets well i mean you know now of course it's you know, we're a little discombobulated although we should be able to get ourselves together because we're xr uh, but uh, uh, that's a group that um, meets, we were meeting, you know, once a month, once every six weeks, something like that before the coronavirus. And it's, it, that's people from all over campus. I mean, that's people from, and I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, it's people from math, it's people from art and design, it's people from architecture, uh, it, it, it's people from, uh, you know, all over campus who come together and we share our research and we bring our graduate students with us. And, you know, and everybody gets a sense of what everybody else is on, on campus. And those are some of the most lively and most interesting gatherings I've been to in the time that I've been at SIU is the XR Collective. There's huge energy on campus for, for this kind of research and for moving this stuff into the classroom. Um, and of course, now is the time, you know, now's the time for us to do it. Yeah, I, I, what, I, I can't think of a better time at this point to, you know, talk about when we're all kind of feeling our way into this um, social distancing, working remotely. Um, VR is kind of a way to bring that experience of being there without actually being there. It's the closest thing yep. you can come to already. And, and luckily enough, the technology is, is pretty much there at it, the again, moment to, to make it. miraculous, a, right? I mean, right. The, you know, the timing of this is remarkable that you know, we have things like zoom available to us and then if you want to step it up one more you know you get a 400 dollar device and you've got you've got cutting edge virtual reality right there all right um what do you what do you expect to see um in in the future for this overall uh, in terms of new technology new headsets or things that are what's coming down the pipe in this well, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, simulation just gets better and better and better. There's, you know, there are great, uh, you know, driving simulators, flying simulators. You can teach somebody to fly, you know, a Cessna, uh, you know, in a, you know, in a VR headset. And when they get in the cockpit of that Cessna, boom, it's one for one. They just, you know, they understand where everything is, how it all, uh, how it all functions. Um, you know, so I'd like, you know, I'm hoping what, what, I'd, what I'd like to see if I'm dreaming is a kind of, uh, you know, VR center uh, at SIU that is open, that makes this technology and all the cutting edge research in this technology and all the uses of this technology for science, for art, for kinesiology, for medicine, for that makes all of that available to students, right, where you come in and we can, you know, you don't have to own anything. You come in, and this is again, you know, in the days when we all can be together again, although there are ways we can talk about doing this even now when we're all separated. Um, you know, and you come in and there are folks who understand the technology, who understand, who can put you in touch. Like if you come in and you want to make VR art, there are people there who can hook you up with the technology and who can put you in touch with me or with the other people who are making VR art. If you want to come in and you want to, you know, study the human body, right? You know, they can put you in touch with folks in kinesiology. But I think we need a place where we sort of collect, uh, uh, you know, where, where we have the resources to make this real for people on campus who aren't, who, who don't already know about it, right? And, and a student can just walk in. There's, we should just have a, you know, we should, in addition to the esports arena, right? I love that esports arena. Again, I guess I'm talking about when we're all together again. But if, you know, VR esports teams, right? <laughs> you know, we could have we could have the Blue Angels of VR, right? From out of our, our out of the aviation school, put pilots in you know really good networked VR rigs. You know, we could have the best flight demonstration team in VR, and that's actually a thing, right? That may sound crazy to people who aren't in VR. We could have, we could be winning VR races. Right. You know, it's way cheaper than building a car for NASCAR. Right. Well, Put out a you know, four person racing team out of the automotive school. Yeah. Um, you know, we could be, you know, playing all the you know, anti-gravity sports in VR. You know, let's let's put together those teams. I the, the, there is not an aspect of life on campus or 
you know, in the what is now the extended campus, right, which becomes the world, there's not an aspect of that that can't be enhanced by the use of this technology. I don't. And you know the the numbers on VR. I think even in the last couple of years, they they've grown exponentially. More people are using them. More people are developing for them. And I think the fact that you know we're just in the last couple of weeks, we've become more aware of a world in which sometimes we're going to be asked um, uh, to shelter in place to not necessarily be as mobile right. or go as as far as as we used to. There might be times where we have to. Uh, hole up, as it were, uh, to uh, get work done and work collaborate together. I, I think the numbers are only going to be even more, um, or are only going to grow even more from here. Uh, I, I, don't, interesting I don't have a question about it, but that seems to be a really keen analysis. Um, you know, that for better or worse, right, the time for uh, for profound remote communication is on us. Right. And the, at the moment, there is no profounder means of communication than virtual reality. And that's because it's embodied. Right. If you're in your body and you perceive others as being in their bodies, empathy is impossible to avoid. Right. We're just that's that's the sorts of creatures we are. And so, you know, when, when, you know, when we see other people, we can, we can see their sizes, we can see how far away they are, that sort of thing. It just clips right into our, you know, our, our, our empathetic mind. And we begin to imagine, you know, our body, you know, it, it's, 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 it really is a profound effect. Okay. Well, is there uh, anything else that we're leaving out or that we should end close with? Uh, this, this is your chance to kind of do your end pitch on on this initiative so far? Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm, my work life, right? This is like I say, I'm a short story guy. I, this was not what I studied in graduate school or anything like that. I really came to this through just enthusiasm and, and, you know, seeing early, you know, wow, you know, this seems like it's going to have implications. This seems like it's going to be a big narrative tool. And um, so, you know, I mean, my job in the last couple of years since I've started doing this stuff has become so great. I mean, I, you know, I, I wake up in the morning and I think about, you know, essentially playing games, right? And, um, uh, and you know, and that sort of thing. And I, I feel like my students feel something like the same way. You know, one of my students said, you know, I don't, I can't concentrate on my homework except for this class. This class is fine, right? And, and, and that's uh, like, it, it it's an amazing time. Like I know things are dark and terrible and a lot of bad things are going on, but um, you know, right. I mean, it, but, but this is one of those things that, that actually addresses that. Right. And it makes that, it doesn't make it better, but it ameliorates it. It ameliorates, it can ameliorate loneliness and distance and um, you know, and lack of empathy and those sorts of things. And, I, you know, I'm just, I'm thrilled to be at a time and a place and at a university. The university's given me phenomenal support for this. You know, I'm a, like I say, I'm a story guy. I'm in creative writing. I've got a lab, right? Uh, the College of Liberal Arts has made a lab for VR. I've got research assistants. I've got, you know, um, you know, I've got, I've got resources. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's been a, it's, you know, the, the VR stuff is a blessing for me. And I, you know, as much as I can share it with folks, that's kind of why I get out of bed in the morning now, right? Is to, you know, is to, to say, this is a real thing and it's, you know, there's real beauty in it um, and, and, and real advantage. All right. Well, with that, I think we'll close today's conversation. I hope this has um, helped ease some of the, uh, at least some of the boredom for some people that they might be experiencing, uh, you know, sitting at home uh, over the lunch period. Thank everyone who's, who's stuck with us uh, for the whole time. Uh, of course, this will be up uh, available just uh, on demand on our Facebook page uh, as well for you to watch and uh, share. I, I hope you do. If you uh, are excited by what you see or if it, it interests you at all, share it with people that you know because um, it's, it's SIU right now that is uh, kind of at the leading edge of uh, doing this kind of thing. So uh, Pinkney, thank you for uh, taking some time uh, today with us and uh, you know uh, I know you've got uh, you've got classes to conduct this week as well which I, I think in some ways isn't necessarily too 
too much of a disruption from what you were already doing, but obviously. Uh, I mean, it, we, you know, and the students, I, I'm amazed by how adaptable our students have been, how good humored they have been, how patient, how gracious, uh, and, and really have, have just taken hold of this. Graduate students, undergraduate students, it's, you know, I, if anything, if I ever, if I needed the spirit of this place shown to me, my students have shown it to me this semester. All right. Well, with that, uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we will uh, try and come up with other ways to uh, help with uh, engaging alumni while they're, they're stuck at home from now. But uh, for now, thanks everyone. Pinkney, thank you. Have a good day. My pleasure. Y'all have a good, healthy day. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.